the waters of Babylon. It is a great joy to share the experience, um, especially, I know we do in our community of faith, we have some people who like history, who maybe even have taught history. <laughs> it's awesome feeling, folks. Um, just to, before I begin, summarize my own feelings. Um, you've heard people talk about their trips to the Holy Land, Jerusalem. Uh, walking in the footsteps of Jesus, Sea of Galilee, uh, more in Roman Catholic theology, the Via della Rosa, uh, 14 Stations of the Cross. Um, it is true. Uh, it really does bring, when you read the Bible in a different light, same things happens with uh, Exodus, Deuteronomy. Uh, when you walk in the footsteps of King Nebuchadnezzar, the waters of Babylon. Folks, you're safe in our sanctuary or watching online. You won't need security guards with you. You don't have to have your passport with you. And I promise no one this morning is going to ask you if you have a negative PCR test. Yeah, I went through five of them. Um, my nose got a very good glimpse of what the new normal is going to be like as we go forward. Let us now continue. And let's explore the waters of Babylon. I had the incredible fortune to take a study of me, which I'm very grateful for a community of faith, to the Middle East, to walk in the footsteps of Abraham, Sarah, the Apostle Paul, Damascus, Syria. Our group was very well taken care of. We had four physicians with us and a pharmacist, so it might have actually been easier for me to get a hold of a doctor than some of you who were right here in Bob Cajun. Once we arrived in Baghdad, I was updated with some news from back home. There was a corporate merger. I didn't know about this while I was on the plane. I don't know if any of you heard. Um, I think uh, she's very sweet. I'll have to call her up. Mary Tomlinson. FedEx and UPS are going to merge. Okay? So you've got um, a lot of goods being delivered, especially in the pandemic. So they're going to say, what is the new name? FedEx and UPS. Well, I thought it was an interesting name they came up with. Um, might describe how some of you are feeling, but here it is. The new name, FedEx and UPS, is going to be fed up. That's right, folks. And you know, that may really describe how a lot of you are feeling right now. Two years into this pandemic, and you know, I don't know when COVID's going to go away. Folks, it might actually not be going away. And so we really, you know, that name fed up may be actually quite accurate. Um, you know, I mean, they're, they're really not going to merge, but the name fed up. Let's explore that. And let's see how we can be nourished by the waters of Babylon and then let's go fishing with Jesus. Of course, this pandemic's great frustration. Personal relationships also taking a toll. I hold in prayer um, friends of mine who are in the teaching profession. Some of you retired also from the teaching profession. It's not easy for teachers. It's tough. The, dealing with this new environment, Zoom, and did, did Andrew really do his homework? I mean, even, even when there wasn't COVID, that was still a problem for some of my teachers, and I get in trouble with it on parent-teachers night, so I guess some of the things haven't changed. Nurses, yeah, people working in the medical profession, it's been really tough on nurses. One of my friends, uh, her colleague, left the hospital to work as a greeter at Walmart. Stress, very real. She was fed up. Personal support workers, very stressful for them. Working in nursing homes, any of the care professions. And of course, as you know, worship life, well, it's very different than it was in 2019 or in January and February 2020. I am very grateful for all the volunteers. There's numerous, numerous volunteers who are working hard to keep our building open, to getting our message, sending it out to you at home, or wherever you may be in the world, whether you could be in San Diego, 
I did pick up our live stream when I was in Damascus and Istanbul. I'm very thankful for all our volunteers. There's also many phone calls. Yep. Using my phone a lot. Speaking with people. One of some of the joys is um, while I was away on study leave, I did speak to a few of you. That was some fun. I, uh, I'm looking at uh, Dave right now. I, I wanted to wish him a happy new year from Baghdad. I told him I'm having a blast, but don't get excited. I'm safe. I'm also, of course, very grateful to come back in one piece. Now, Jesus, when I lifted up the phone, he used the tools at his disposal. God has given us imagination and creativity. But I want to read something from you from Globe and Mail article. You can see how people are fed up. There's a glaring testament confronting churches across Canada and the United States. Long after the pandemic lockdowns, some of the country's faithful have appeared to have lost faith. I quote directly, Christianity has been a defining cultural feature of Canada and the United States since its inception. But COVID-19 has stripped away large numbers of people from the country's places of worship amid a broader trend towards secularization. In the past two years, some smaller churches have sought government pandemic funds, cut staff, and even put their buildings up for sale. Bigger churches with their Grammy-winning worship bands. However, I did just start learning to play the saxophone in October, so we can get there too. And their television caliber live streams. I am very impressed with Al and Dave. But even the bigger churches, they have not been immune. Many more empty seats. Do you remember the story, another Old Testament story, David and Goliath? We're facing a Goliath. It's not a giant from an alien race, nor is this a bully. But let's dig deeper into scripture and discover what were God's people doing in Babylon. Water, significant theme from our scriptural readings. Water washes away dirt, cleanses, gives life. As we drink from the water provided by the Creator, we are blessed. I will draw upon my pilgrimage in January, and also Psalm 119. The psalmist tells us, the people wept when they thought of Zion. Zion is Jerusalem, just as you heard in the Ministry of Music. The Israelites, they wanted to go home, return life to normal. They were fed up. Just like some of you may be feeling, fed up with this COVID. Some of you folks listening online, fed up. When are we returning to normal? The ancient Hebrews were captive under the Assyrian Empire. We may feel in a similar boat, captive by Emperor COVID. Lockdowns, restrictions. Listen to the political spectrum. Some of you have heard people say these two words, my rights, yeah, my rights. Individual versus collective rights. It's very difficult to manage them. I remember a phone call I had from a lady before I left. She asked me to write for her a religious exemption so she would not have to get vaccinated. She's entitled to do so. I told her I actually support the vaccination process. I started with this pandemic, actually at Scarborough Health Network. I call it a jab for Jesus. I uh, wrote that in an email to Carol, who I'm looking at right now. So we, we were pretty sure that the trucker convoy wouldn't find that funny, the jab for Jesus. But for me, it's a sign of love. I told her I respect her rights. She doesn't have to get vaccinated, but I will. 
how I show love for my neighbor, whether they may be right here in Bob Cajun, or whether they could be in Baghdad. Our lights. She was very distressed and angry. The emotion she was expressing was fear. She told me, fear is being used against us. The ancient Hebrews, when you look at Babylon, they also had to deal with fear. Have you heard these words before? The Old Testament, yeah, for me, you know, it's out of date. It doesn't have relevance. The Christian faith is a New Testament religion. My opinion, well, there's two testaments. And in my own theology, Islam's a third testament. For the imagination of God, it has no end. Now, King Nebuchadnezzar, he ruled from ancient Babylon, which is real. You can read this, but in other locations than the Hebrew Bible. I want to direct you to a colored gate. And let's go there right now to ancient Babylon. Right there, folks, that is the gate, the gate of Ishtar. You see the palm leaves right on the side. Now, obviously, in King Nebuchadnezzar's time, folks, um, there would not be any yellow taxi by the gate. It'd be horse-drawn carriage. But let's go. Let's go to the uh, gates of Ishtar. Right there. There you go. What are these? These are the bull and Marduk. These are Babylonian gods. Now, this is a replica, okay? The gate of Ishtar. This is real, what I'm holding in my hand right now. The blue, okay, the blue color that you see on the picture is this blue on the shard of pottery. The actual age of the shard of pottery, it's going to be older than Jesus for sure. Three, 3,500, I don't know. But what did this pottery represent? Could this have been something one of the family of King Nebuchadnezzar used? Could this have been a peasant? Could this have been part of a wall? I don't know, but the history, when you hold this little piece of pottery, you're going back in time. What really makes the scripture, Psalm 119, very real is that when you hold this piece of pottery, it's not fairy tale. It's not a story somebody just made up. Babylon is real. When you think of the religious significance of that, and especially as the spirit, the spirit of Ron Flett is with us. If Ron heard this story, what would Ron be saying? Oh my God. <laughs> well said, well said, that is correct. Oh my God, that is very accurate because over 3,000 years in just one shard of pottery. This would be an original color of blue. Now with over time, 3,000 years, the blue is faded. If you want to see the original gate of Berlin, I mean not Berlin, the gate of Ishtar, you have to go to Berlin, Antiquities Museum, and you can't see the original today. There's something else. Okay, here we are inside the city of Babylon. Now you're looking at a wall. Why am I showing this to you? Have you heard the English expression, the writing is on the wall? Okay. Well, folks, it's not something one of the, I don't know, former prime minister made up, or John Locke, or a European intellectual. It happened here, Prophet Daniel. Room number four, ancient city of Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar sees the writing God with God's finger that the Assyrian Empire is coming to an end. Something other of historical significance. Have you heard the name Alexander the Great? I'm guessing yes. Well, where did he die? This room, room number four, ancient city of Babylon where Alexander the Great had his last breath. 
it's, it's amazing when you put your feet anywhere, anywhere on this floor, you look at the wall, imagine the writing, where was Alexander, um, who was with him, what was the day like, I have no idea. But the history is phenomenal. It's amazing. And let's look outside. Here it is today, folks. The ancient city of Babylon. It's very well preserved, as you can see. Over 3,000 years old. And folks, why this is also, I want to show this to you. Um, there weren't any construction companies. No one had cranes. No one was using caterpillar. Um, no bulldozers. How did they construct this? And look at it, it's still, you can visit it today. It's amazing. Now, obviously, there's not too many tourists, uh, not too many pilgrims, um, other than my guide, a um, couple security guards, a taxi driver, that's it. Um, so it's, it's very, it's a blessing to be able to have this kind of access to scripture, and it's very real, it's, it's awesome. And just imagine in the Ministry of Music video. You can see it looks very different today. There aren't any actual rivers there. And there's not people um, having with their olive branches or eating dates. But you can imagine, where would people be sitting? And they're in captivity. They're also fed up. But when you look at these stories, this is the foundation where Paul and Jesus walked on, where the New Testament comes afterwards. Jesus, he preached from the Hebrew Bible, summarizes 613 laws into two. Okay, they're Matthew 22, 35 through 50, Mark 12, 28 through 34, Luke 10, 27. I'll paraphrase them all. Love the Lord with all your heart, body, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. These were inspired by the ancient Israelites, Hebrew Bible, which Jesus preached from, and they were in captivity right here, which you see on the screen, the ancient city of Babylon. Adapt. Jesus adapted to what the environment that he had to deal with. Paul adapted to the environment that he had to deal with. Paul understood the importance of Jesus as his letter to the Ephesians, Ephesians 4.29, uplift the body of Christ in word, action, and deed. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, 27 through 28. Now you, all of you, are the body of Christ and individually members of it. All of you come together to form one body. When all the members of the body of Christ love, support each other, amazing things happen. There is hope. There is joy. The bitterness and anger of frustration is transformed. Remember the wedding at Cana. Water into wine. It is possible to transform being fed up to being filled with the love of Jesus. And as we move from Babylon, and as we go to the Sea of Galilee to go fishing with the disciples, we are reminded that Jesus offered us a new path, a new way to be in relationship with God. Jesus tells his disciples to cast their nets out in the deeper waters. Think of the deeper waters. What comes to your mind? Further away from shore, what lurks in these deeper waters? Unknown. There's fear. Fear again. Fear of the unknown. Jesus is asking us to go farther from the shore and search for fish in the deeper waters. Now the disciples follow this command. And they're rewarded. They didn't expect this. What Jesus says to Simon, do not be afraid. There's a, there's a lovely song in more voices. Now, I know my singing voice can create fear. It's a good thing we have Brenda here. 
Don't be afraid, for my love is stronger, stronger than your fear. Yeah, it's true. God's love is stronger than your fear. So if you feel fed up, you have friends, family, who are fed up, God's love is stronger than their fear. The disciples changed their mindset. There was a new normal. Those words sound familiar. This included following Jesus and leaving the older ways behind. This can be tough. Change. Resistance to change. It's a reality in many organizations, including church life, teaching profession, health care. Many vocations are struggling with this. However, two years into this pandemic, you've had some people, my focus is church life, who have washed themselves of fear. The pandemic, it's brought dividends to those congregations. They may struggle with it. The gremlins may show up, but they will adapt with technology. Pastoral care takes a different form the new normal. I'm actually looking forward to that this week. I have a jam session with my saxophone with a couple of our talented musicians. I'm really looking forward to that. Remember, 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now you are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part. Paul tells us we are all members of the body of Christ. We love and support each other. What will our mission, Bob Cajun Province Pastoral Charter, what will the mission look like the rest of 2022, 23? Growing, caring, and sharing. I'm going to conclude with St. Paul. We are afflicted, but not crushed. Perplexed but not despairing. We can thrive with COVID. Churches will grow in different ways than what has happened in the past. When we believe in each other, build trust, speak with sincerity, listen and respect each other, the future will be peace. Matthew 6, 25, do not worry. Go by the grace of God, go on. Amen. Amen. One word, transformation. I believe it was um, the January 16th service, the wedding at Cana, turning water into wine, and now we've journeyed from the waters of Babylon into the Sea of Galilee, right into Pigeon Lake and Sturgeon Lake. Let us take this love of Jesus, the new normal it is forming, and we will embrace it, and let's go forth and make a difference. Amen. Thank you.